good morning everyone so let's uh, get to start with start with today's part so what we have done yesterday motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field if field exists all over the space and field is uniform and particle is having velocity perpendicular to field it has a circular motion and you seen yesterday field is not entire space is a narrow strip of field it may travel either it may turn back it may pass over to other side so today what you are doing there is a field exists only half the space so where is the field existing here field is existing only if we draw y axis it is on the right hand side there is a field left hand side there is no field and this y axis forms the boundary okay and when you look at the figure so a charged particle enters a semi infinite magnetic field making an angle theta with the boundary but what is the still the velocity of what is the angle velocity is making with magnetic field here this theta is angle with the boundary not with the magnetic field magnetic field is perpendicular to plane of paper velocity is still perpendicular so it still is the case of velocity being perpendicular to magnetic field and as soon as it enters magnetic field magnetic force will act it will follow a circular path so since it is a positive charge is a cross field force will act towards left it will deviate and it will move along a circular path until it reaches this point here and as soon as after crossing this point here the magnetic force will stop acting and go into tangential path so when you look at this here so uh, let's look at what are the terms in indicated here so this part of thing you can view as a property of a circle so this is my center here and when you look at this let's say this ab is the chord okay and let's even before we start also let me check this angle as is theta at the center here and this angle also theta if these two angles are theta this is 90 minus theta this angle also becomes equal to theta and this angle also becomes theta i am started from where i started from uh, angle made here at the center and this is theta theta this is the exterior angle this will become equal to 2 theta okay and uh, if this angle is theta this angle also theta so this how the angles are okay and so what we understand from here if it enters with an angle theta the uh, the angle made by the chord here will be equal to 2 theta or angle subtended by the circular path it follows inside the magnetic field will be equal to 2 theta and 2 theta also this is angle between normal so same would be the angle between tangents which is 2 theta the angle between tangent also is 2 theta this is the direction of initial velocity and this is the direction of final velocity so this how are the figure is like so there may be some questions whenever you have something like this and rest all is simple properties of circle we can easily answer such question So it travels by it will travel along a circular path while inside the magnetic field, and it will exit or emerge tangentially. And uh, is from property of circle, it is very easy to notice if we draw a chord. If this angle is theta, this angle also will be equal to theta. This angle will be theta, and this also theta. So it will always exit at the same angle as it has entered. Okay. So what is angle of deviation? Angle between the velocity vectors and entry and exit point. This is equal to angle between tangents. But since it's a vector, we need to think in terms of placing those two vectors tail to tail, which is two theta, which is angle between normal angle of deviation. So what are things here? But when you look at this circle, what are the lengths angles which are important here? Okay, so when if it angles at forty five degree, we know what is the angle it will describe within the magnetic field. It will describe twice that angle. So if this angle is thirty degree, it will travel a distance of sixty degree. If this angle angle is ninety, as we have seen earlier, if this angle is ninety, it will form a same circle. It will subtend an angle equal to one eighty degree. Right. So that's what we have. Uh, this is property of a circle. This easy thing, and uh, let's see. Uh, what is the length of the chord what do, can we calculate the uh, y coordinate of the point at what distance it will exit from the point of entry so what is ab indicate ab indicate distance between entry point and the exit point so can we calculate the length of the chord length of chord is fairly simple to calculate okay i'll remove this theta theta part i have understood what those angles are so what is this chord length ab 2 hours sin theta Two hours and theta. This is actually nothing great to calculate. Once we get a hang of what those angles are and what is the distance, this is radius. And how much is r is equal to r? Also, we know it is equal to mv by q. Right. So this is pretty simple. So what is the length of the chord? Or we can say what is the 
distance between entry point and exit point is equal to 2 r sin theta. Okay, what is the maximum x coordinate? So it is just entered at origin. So this is a point where it had maximum x coordinate. And this is the depth it will go inside the magnetic field. Can we calculate this length also? This length is equal to r minus this length here. And this length is equal to what? So what is this length equal to? How much, how deep it will go inside the magnetic field? That's also easy to calculate. This distance is equal to r minus r cos, r cos theta. So that is possible. There's nothing to memorize maximum x coordinate or minimum thickness of field for particle to come back. So if the field is having a thickness greater than this, then only what will happen, it will come back. If the field is limited, if it is less than that, it will not come back. Right? And for travel inside, how long it will travel inside? How long it will remain inside the magnetic field? How would you calculate the time? So it is having circular path. So it had an angular displacement of two theta. And it has some angular velocity. So I will calculate time using property of circular motion. In case of circular motion, time is equal to angular displacement by angular velocity. Angular displacement is 2 theta. Angular velocity is V by R. How would you calculate R? I can substitute. I will not make this, uh, uh, this thing look complicated by putting the value of R here. I can I calculate R separately. Omega is equal to V by R. Okay, so we can calculate how long does it remain inside. So uh, this also we can calculate distance between exit entry point, what maximum distance it will penetrate inside the magnetic field. We can also calculate the time it travels inside the magnetic field. Yes, Asha. Sir, like uh, I didn't understand how the angle of entry will be equal to angle of exit. Sir. Why angle of entry? Okay, let me do that part again. Okay, so let's see that one. See, this is a, uh, let's forget, it's a circle. This part is a circle. Okay, it's yes, an arc sir. of a circle and these are normal. Okay, this is normal. So let me write this angle as theta and this angle as theta. If this angle is theta, okay, what would this, this will be 90 minus theta, what would this angle be? Theta, sir. This also theta. And this angle also theta. Can they be different? These two angles, can they be different? Uh, no, sir, because tangents will be equal. Ah, so they cannot be different. And oh. this angle is theta. What is this angle? Theta only. Theta. So this is two angles are equal. It proves that angle of exit and entry also are equal. And once okay. I have this theta and theta, extreme angle becomes two theta. So just okay. simple use. I think people have already finished circular motion, uh, circles. Okay, so this is a pretty easy part, uh, not a complicated property of circle. So this is something, moment I think this is a arc of a circle and this is a chord of a circle. If I extend, if I extend the chord, it becomes the boundary. If I extend the tangent, it becomes the trajectory. But this is a straight line path, is it not? When you extend the chord here, the chord becomes the boundary of the magnetic field. Right? So, uh, so we can easily calculate how long it remains inside the magnetic field also. Now, only thing what will happen if this charge was positively charged, it will turn towards left. What happened had it been negatively charged? It would turn towards other direction. What kind of motion it would have had? Something like this. So in this case, actually angular displacement is much more. So what do you do? Whenever we have something like this, it is not having the minor arc of the circle, it is describing the minor, major arc of the circle. What will happen in this case, wherever theta is, now in this particular case, angle of entry will not take as theta. Actually, if I took in place of theta, if I substitute pi minus theta, everything else remains same. So whatever terms we have come across here, if I substitute pi minus theta, if it makes this kind of path, everything remains same. So this is something, uh, some of the cases you can do that also. Or other way of thinking, in this case, this circle is described. If I complete the remaining part of the circle, just give me a second.
Okay, sorry, sorry. sorry. So uh, in case of uh, pi minus theta, so uh, this will not be two theta, it will become two pi minus two theta. So every place in place of theta, we substitute pi minus theta. Rest of things holds good, it's a property of circle. And I can easily get that expression. Okay, so whenever it enters at an angle also, it's not an issue, it's something similar. It describes part of a circle and we can easily arrive at the appropriate expression. So I hope all of you realize there's nothing much in terms of formula. If we realize this is, if we understand this is a circular path, these are the two normals, this forms a chord and the boundary is extension of the chord and expression of tangent is the path it will follow at the entry point and exit point, property of type, uh, so property of arc of a circle, if you apply arc a circle and chord tangent, you get the required expression. I, th I don't think there's anything which need to be memorized. Here. Okay, let's look at some simple application of something what you have done so far. A uh, mixture of accelerated through, just read the particle here. Uh, to read this question here, and this is a very pretty easy question to solve. So one by one, let's go through some few questions before we move on to some more variety of uh, application. So moment is say accelerated through same potential. What does this accelerated through same potential imply? Shamni, can you tell me what is this, what is the significance of this term here in this question? What are two particles? Yes, if they're same potential, unless they have charge, those particles will not get accelerated. Particle have to have a charge. So what do we understand from this expression, Shauni? No response, Gayatri? What happened, none of you responding? Hmm? No, sir, I'm not. Ah, yes, no, something you're not clear what to solve. See, this question is what? It is related. See, what is written here? It is about radius. See, for immediately we should come, it is related to radius of particle moving in a magnetic field, velocity being perpendicular. And this radius, uh, what does radius is in, in terms of uh, per formula? Radius is equal to MB one formula you should remember, mv by qb. But we mentioned from here very quickly, you can write different forms. I can write uh, this momentum by qb. And if uh, it is in terms of sometimes it is moment it talks of energy, I can write, write momentum in terms of energy, okay, kinetic energy. But uh, where does the kinetic energy come from? Kinetic energy comes from QV. loss of potential energy. So I can write as 2m into q into what is this v? Potential difference. Okay. So this question is based on this relationship. Right. So what we have to R1 and R2. So we need to, what is R proportional to here? R is rest of things which are the thing with R is proportional to uh, B is same, B is same. What is changing here? Only uh, M Q. and Q. So only M and Q. So what is what would remain here? Root of M Q by Q. M by root. Which is proportional to root of M by Q. So what is R1 by R2? This question. So when are such questions are there? What is difficult to arrive at? It is not difficult at all. We can easily arrive at this expression. This is what it implies. Same potential. So I need to write an expression. Since radius is involved, I need to write an equation which connects radius to potential. And this is very easy to think. This is what it is. Okay. Gayatri, is this clear or was it easy? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay. Yes. Okay, so but these are some simple questions. We'll practice some more questions. I'll come to some more device which is uh, uh, called cyclotron. And those who have any interest in physics, you'll keep reading, I think, once in a while. Even in news, also, sometimes we read uh, about uh, some articles about cyclotron. Let's understand cyclotron is a device which works on a magnetic field. And it's a device to impart high kinetic, kinetic energy to charge particles using a combination of electric and magnetic field. And what is the shape here? See, suppose I have a, uh, what is he here? If they call two Ds, because shape is like a D letter of English or a D alphabet. So if I have, I can think of D as what? It's a cylinder of a small height. It's a cylindrical shell of a small height. If I cut along the diameter and create some space between the two. It becomes two half cylindrical shell. Okay, so this part, the sides are covered, top and bottom are covered. So there's opening at this cross section, rectangular cross section is opening at this cross section. So these are two Ds and these are made of, these are made of a metal container. Okay, so anything about metal, inside the metal, there's no electric field because of shielding effect. 
So for this two bees are created, and these are created. There's a vacuum inside. Why there's a vacuum when the charged particle moves? If there's an air particle present, if it collides with the air particle, it loses kinetic energy. So two Ds are vacuum uh, vacuum chambers. And let's see how does it function. And as you see from here, so we have created two Ds, and then we also the vacuum so that there's no air minimum or air particles or any other gas particle inside. And there's a magnetic field created along axis of the D. In this particular case, magnetic field is pointing upwards. So inside the D everywhere, as it moving in the D, it will always move in a circular path, right? It follows in a circular path. And inside the D, there's no electric field, only magnetic field is present. So inside the D, it follows a circular path. What is circular path? The radius we know. Let's see what, what happens, how does it uh, impart kinetic energy? So there are two Ds, magnetic field along the axis of the Ds. I hope you understand. No electric field inside the D due to the shielding effect. And within the D, it will move in a semi-circular path. Okay, and what would the radius be? Radius will be equal to this formula we know, just now we discussed, is the radius. So, uh, depending on the radius, we can relate the kinetic energy to the radius. So, kinetic energy is this. So, the particles which will have higher kinetic energy will have higher radius. So, if uh, energy increases, it will start moving in a higher radius. And what about time period as the energy changes? The time period is independent of energy and radius is dependent on energy. What we notice here, radius is dependent on energy, time period is not dependent on energy. So if we change the energy of the charged particle, if we increase the energy, what will happen to radius? If we increase the radius in energy of charged particle, what will happen to the radius here, Kevin? If we increase the kinetic energy in some manner, what will happen to radius? Everything else remaining same. Kevin? Sir, the radius will increase. Increase. Kinetic energy increase the kinetic energy, radius will increase. Square. With the time period change? Root proof. With no, the sir. time period change? No, sir. Time period will not change. Okay. It so it will take same time. So if there are two particles, one with the higher energy, one with the lower energy, both will take same time to traverse the semicircular path, but radiuses will be different. Okay. Now let's see whether how do we impart kinetic energy. See, this is something. So it is traveling. See, it has its path can be divided parts when it is moving inside the d it is moving in a semicircular path because of magnetic field and there is some space between the 2d between this 2d when it moves there is an electric field we create a potential difference between 2d potential difference creates electric field so when it moves from 1d to other d electric field is created in the direction so that it accelerates the charge particle if we have potential difference v between the two Ds, it will gain a kinetic energy equal to QV if the direction of potential difference is appropriate. So where does it gain kinetic energy? It gains kinetic energy between the two D where mag electric field exists. Okay. So if it is positive charged particle, what has to happen? Let's take a case. So sup suppose the particle from here to starts, it goes up to this point. And from here, it is moving from this point to this point. It is moving from A to B. And if it is positive charged particle, which one has to have higher potential? A has to have higher potential or B has to have higher potential? See, to gain kinetic energy, it must lose potential energy. So A should have B. So when it is moving from A to B, A should, have A should be at higher potential. Then what will happen from when it moves from A to B, it will lose potential energy, it will gain kinetic Radius will increase. Okay. And when it enters B, what will happen? Okay, when it comes, it has certain radius. When it reaches B, its energy has increased, it will trace a larger radius. So it will move like this, larger radius, but time period will remain same as, as this. And it reaches here. Now it reaches point C. Now it's moving from C to D. Again, it is traveling from one D to other D. Now which has to have potential now? Earlier, it has to have, earlier D1 had to have potential. Now D2 should be at higher potential. Then only it will accelerate. So what has to happen? The potential difference between the two also should keep changing as it moves from one D to the other. At what frequency the polarity of the potential should change? As same frequency as the frequency of motion of charge particle. So high potential accelerating potential exists between two Ds to increase the kinetic energy. It loses potential uh, electrical potential energy, gains kinetic energy. So every T by two, what is the time it has taken from B to C? How much time it will take? It will take time T by two. So by the time it will again it will gain some kinetic energy. Every time it will gain same amount of kinetic energy. So when it reaches D, it has even more, why it has not entered same point, again, even higher radius. So what will happen every half a circle, as it passes from one D to other, 
if uh, polarity of uh, potential difference is also changed every time it travels from one d to other it will gain kinetic energy and radius also will keep increasing so progressively the radius will keep increasing if the particle is entered from somewhere near the center as radius keeps increasing as gain, gain, gaining energy radius keeps increasing until it reaches a large radius and there's exit point it exits so there was an entry point here somewhere and there's an exit point here so when it enters at a smaller radius it comes out at a larger radius if the radius is 10 times more its kinetic energy will become 100 times more. so kinetic energy is proportional to the square of the radius sir so, so far what i explained yes so shouldn't it be q square b square which one q square b square in the kinetic energy exp expression sir. sorry yes i think q square I this i didn't type wrong. this is q square b square no q square b square r square uh, basically this term all these terms will remain constant Actually, what is k is equal to k is equal to some constant into r square. So kinetic energy will vary as the square of radius. Okay. So when the radius becomes ten times, kinetic energy becomes hundred times. So this is q square b square. I didn't type properly. So this is q square b square. So what is the important point here? If a few things we want to understand here, yes, Vinesh. Sir, I didn't understand the part about no electric field due to shielding effect. See, uh, when we uh, see, it is something. Suppose I have metal container. If I keep charge inside the metal container and outside this electric field, will there be an electric field inside the container? No, sir. No. It's a conductor, right, sir? No, it's a conductor. Okay, sir. So something similar. We don't have to go in minute detail. How does it function? But this is something we call as electrical cage. So there's no electric field inside. So if again I have to summarize, what are the key points we are understood in this particular case? Uh, what is the device? Cyclotron is a device to impart high kinetic energy to charge particle. What the device is like, it contains two Ds. I hope all of you understand how is D created. D is created, it is something like a cylinder for a small height and it's, it's a conducting material cylinder. We cut into two half, create a small spacing and uh, we, we vacuumize it and we create a field along the axis of the cylinder, which is this is shape. So uh, its motion also has two parts when it moves inside the D. It is acted upon only a magnetic field, hence it will have semicircular path. But it travels from one D to other, it is acted upon by electric field. If we adjust the direction of electric field or we adjust the potential difference, every time it travels from one D to the other, it will gain a kinetic energy equal to Q into V, V being the potential difference. Okay. And, but as it moves, important point, two points are what we noticed here. Okay. So, per, as kinetic energy keeps increasing, radius will keep increasing, but time period will remain same. Okay, so uh, advantage is something. So what is it? since the time period same? It since the time period of circular motion is constant, it becomes a little easier to adjust the polarity of the voltage. So whatever time period have the uh, the frequency. Of voltage we apply also should match with the frequency of a circular motion of charged particle, which is called cyclotron frequency. What is the voltage? It will, what is the energy it will gain in every half a cycle? It will gain an energy every half a cycle Q into V. Okay, and uh, uh, see this is something like this. See, suppose if, if this is how the voltage is, and this is what the time is. So what is the kind of voltage we have? Square wave field. The square means, but this is something. What does plus and minus indicate? Indicates that the polarity is changing. So if I take plus indicate d1 is higher, the negative will indicate d2 is at higher potential. So if this one, what is, is this time is okay. this is the time period, and this is equal to 2t, and this is equal to 3t. So what we understand from here? So suppose uh, when it is crossing from here, uh, when it is crossing from this point to this point. When is at A, and if it is positive charge, which should have higher potential. So let's see where it is at A. It is somewhere. It is. At, it reaches A at this point. Okay. So when would it reach B? So which is higher potential? D1 is higher potential. It will accelerate. When would after reaching A? This is a small distance. How much time will it take from A to B? And how much time will it take to reach C? To C, it will take time at t by two. So this is when this particle reaches C. By the time it reaches C, already the polarity has been reversed. Now D2 is at higher potential. So again, when it moves from C to D, it will accelerate. And by the time C from C, it has D, it has moved to point E. Again, D1 has become 
at a higher potential. So as, as long as we maintain uh, EMF, which is of this shape, we could have even done something like this also. Still, this also will produce the same result. But if it is a square wave, a small adjustment time also, wherever it is, it's a little here and there, still the polarity is matching. So I hope you understand what does the polarity mean? What, what is the, uh, what does positive and negative sign indicate? Positive and negative sign indicate uh, the, uh, yeah, we keep changing uh, the plate which is connected to positive terminal. It's like AC supply source. Okay, and the rest all this. So in terms of any formula or something, there's not, absolutely nothing new. It's the same thing, what we have, uh, uh, Radius is same, time period frequency is same, time period is same. Energy gained is QV uh, recycle. Okay. So, polarity uh, between the D should change. Yes, Vignesh? Sir, the frequency at which the polarity should be reversed should be twice the frequency, right, sir? Of the... No, tell me. What is frequency? See, this in this particular case, uh, that's why I'm again explaining this point. Okay. See, what is the frequency? Let me repeat this point again for the benefit of everyone. This is A point. This is B point. B to say takes an eligible time. This is C point and this is D point. And yes. this, okay. Are you able to see what are points I have marked? Yes. Okay. So let's say, but this is something. So this is, okay. This is, let's say this EMF wave. What is the time period here? Which is this the time period? Where, when is the whole wave? What is the periodicity of this wave? This is the time period. I hope all of you follow. This is the repeated part. This is the time period. Yes. So this is 2T. And this is 3D. This is for the voltage. Now let's see uh, what would happen to uh, so uh, it comes to B. Let's see it uh, here. It is at B point. Okay, and B at some time it has reached B. And B point, which should have higher potential for it to gain a, a energy. D1 should be at higher potential. So I mark D1 to be positive. D1 is at higher potential. How much time it takes from uh, uh, B to D? T by 2 or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will take time T by 2 from here. So B to C, how much time does it take? So it will, it, it will take time. See, what has to happen? By the time uh, it has come from B to E, again, uh, EMF also should have completed one cycle. Or voltage also should have come. So by the time, see, from B to E, it has completed one full circular path. So by the time it comes B to E, even this applied voltage also should have completed one cycle. So this is a simple point, I think, uh, and not a major point, not too many variety. The frequency of uh, voltage which is applied, or frequency of voltage or electric field, should match with the cyclotron frequency. Cyclotron frequency becomes of the charged particle. This is the time period. The so cyclotron frequency is inverse of the uh, time period, which is QB by 2 pi. -R. So even before we start, depending on if we have taken alpha particle, uh, and we applied a particular value of field, we know what is the frequency it will have. Based on the charge on the particle, if it is alpha particle 2E, mass of the alpha particle, and we can calculate the frequency. So I'll set the frequency of applied voltage to same frequency as the cyclotron frequency. In that case, what will happen? Every time it will pass through, it will keep gaining kinetic energy. That's the principle it works on. And uh, some of you might have worked the CERN and other laboratories which works on uh, subatomic particle. Subatomic particle, they make use of cyclotron pretty often. And the cyclotron, you know, what is what kind of radius will this needed for having larger this radius is, greater is the kinetic energy you can impart. So as uh, we want more and more kinetic energy, radius also has to be more. Some of you heard of what is the size kind of radius uh, some of the labs have. Radius of cyclotron in sun. Yes, sir. Akash, you have some question? No, sir. Okay. okay. So basically, larger the radius is and uh, larger the energy it will acquire, acquire. Okay. So I hope this part is clear. The frequency of those two have to be same. I still doubt on this. Vignesh? No, sir. Are you still doubtful? No, sir. No, sir. And we, if still doubtful, just think it over. Again, uh, some problem. Again, we'll try to understand in some different way. Okay. Okay. So, 
and uh, I was just looking at some, some of the labs and all they have even just uh, checked yesterday what is the uh, radius of uh, this kind of cyclotron in Sun lab? It's about 15 meters or something, very large radius is also. And I think they were also creating something which is a kilometer long. And long. Okay, so I'm after T2, we move from D2 to D1, that's what I was explaining. So during the time interval T by 2, the polarity of voltage should change. So uh, what is one cycle? One cycle, see in one cycle, if you have an AC, the ACC, you would have seen something like AC. How many times in one, one time cycle, how many times the polarity changes? Twice. That's the point. Polarity changes twice in one cycle in case of AC also. Okay. The polarity gained in each half cycle, UV. As K increases, radius keeps increasing. And ratio of final energy to kinetic initial energy. What is the ratio of final energy to initial energy? Yes, since energy is solid, here also I have to write Q square. Since energy is proportional to R square, ratio of initial energy, final energy also will be the square of the radius, ratio of the radius. Sir? Yes? Sir, like how can we intuitively understand how time period won't change, sir? No, yesterday because... I told also. Yeah, do you recall how did I explain why how the time period will remain same? Intuitively, very logical. If not, again, I'll repeat that point. I think many will forget that point. How, why the time period? Say, let's quickly do that part. What we said yesterday also, I think you missed that point, and it does happen. So, if there's a charged particle which is a given velocity v, and positive charged particle in the field is like this, okay. So, one particle, this is what q v, m q v each particle. It is given velocity v, it traces circle of radius r, r is equal to mv by q v. Now, if I have another particle here, other particle is having velocity. This particle has twice the velocity. Mass is same, m q and 2v. What will happen? This particle radius will be equal to 2mv by qb. So first particle goes like this. How would the second particle move? If second particle will move twice the radius. So what will the angular velocity? Angular velocity for the first particle omega 1 is v by r. And second particle, velocity also has become double. And uh, radius also has become double. Angular velocity will remain same. It will take same time to complete. So if I project this blue and red particle together from here, one with the velocity v, other with the velocity 2v, both will come back to, they will take same time to complete one circular path because the particle which is moving with a higher velocity has to trace out a larger or longer path. This path is twice as long. That's why the time period remains same. Okay. Okay, so plus some simple question on cyclotron. Let's see whether, and do we need to apply any new formula? No new formula in cyclotron. So let's look at uh, this question. A cyclotron with protons are accelerated. Which is accelerated? Proton is accelerated. Having a flux density, flux density is another term what we use for a magnetic field. B value is given as 1.57. What is the particle? Particle is a proton. And what do we need to find here? We need to frequency of the electric field. So what is the frequency? Frequency is equal to 1 by 1 by t. And 1 by t is equal to 2 by m by, m by b. So do we know all the parameters here? Yes, sir. we know all the parameters. We can substitute and can find. So what is charge? Charge we know 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. B is given as 1.57 and divided by 2 pi. The only thing problem is in case of electron, what, uh, okay, proton. What is the mass of proton? Well, you can easily find that value. Okay. So they are simple question. That's the frequency of uh, This question, how do we calculate energy? I'll use this condition, radius is given. Let's look at the cyclotron and just to put on B. What are things given? B is given. Extreme radius is given. So outermost radius R0 is given. So it will exit at this radius. What is the energy of proton? So I'll use an equation which relates radius to energy. Which is the equation which relates radius to energy? R0 is equal to root 2m. K by QB. Okay. So what is the energy? Energy will be equal to 
square b square r naught square by 2m. If I substitute in everything in SI unit, the answer to energy will come in terms of joules. How do we convert into electron volts? So one electron volt is equal to the charge is one, it is becomes equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 joules. So once I have something in joules, if I have to convert Ke in electron volts, I have to divide Ke in joules by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90. So this term, if I divide by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 into Q square B square R naught square by 2M, this will come in electron volts. But if I want master in milli, per million electron volts, I divide by 10 to the power 6. So this expression is substitute the all values. So this question, what I thought we'll discuss, we understand, we should understand how to convert. See, one, if a charge is equal to one coulomb and voltage is one, if the charge had been, so basically energy in joules is equal to charge into potential. If charge is equal to, uh, what is uh, electron volts? Electron volts when the charge is equal to charge of one electron. That's why this 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 term comes in here. Okay, so uh, what we notice here, so for final energy, so this is the property of particle which you cannot change. To have higher kinetic energy, what are things we can adjust? We can have higher magnetic field and we can have a cyclotron which has large radius. These are the two things which affect the final energy of a emergent proton. And uh, this is something you understand. What kind of energy? Million electron volts. See, uh, if uh, I want to give an energy of million electron volts in a normal way to a proton, what I need to do? How can I give in single passage that kind of energy? I have to have create a potential difference of, suppose I want to give energy of 1 million electron volts. I have to calculate a potential difference of 1 million volts. So if a proton moves from one point to other, between two points, which are having a potential difference of 1 million volts, then only it requires this kind of energy. But what happens in case of cyclotron, even if I have potential difference or not, just, just take, take it, if the potential difference is only one kilovolts. If I make the electron pass through in the circle pass thousand times, what is happening? If it thousand times means it is completing 500 circular motion. If it completes 500 circular motion, every time it is gaining this energy. So what is happening? Same potential difference is used multiple times so that effect gets multiplied in case of cyclotron. That's how the functioning of cyclotron is. And uh, it's not a big topic. It's only a small mention in the book. So not too much in detail. If we understand what we have discussed so far, that is adequate for cyclotron. Okay, uh, this also, uh, let's look at the question. See, is it something you can easily solve? What is given here? Frequency is given. It's asking what is the magnetic field. So what we need to do here? is asking what for a given frequency, the frequency and magnetic field are related. So what is frequency is equal to? Frequency is equal to one by T is equal to 2 pi m, we, this formula we remember, it comes so many and so many times. So what are things which are given here? Frequency, when the frequency is given, and, and q is given, m is given, for give, this, this, this question only indicates that frequency and these things are related. So uh, I can easily calculate value of b. And Tesla and Weber per meter square are the same unit. Unit. Okay, now we come to magnetic field having charge. This also is that uh, this question is it easy to solve? All of you just look at this. I thought one question we can do in vector notation. Can we solve this question easily? All of you just read, see that question, read that question, and see how do we solve.
can we visualize what is happening here? So this X Y plane. Let's see that if we get a, either draw a figure or the motion is taking place in X Y plane. So this is going into xy plane and all the velocities are given in xy. Which direction the magnetic field exists? Magnetic field exists along plus k direction. So plus k will be equal to dot magnetic field. And which direction the force acts? Can you mark the direction which the force is acting here? So along four and three, this is the direction in which the force is acting. If force is acting, if the charged particle is positive, can you mark the direction of velocity here? Because once you mark the which quadrant the velocity lies, I can eliminate these options. Can you mark the direction of velocity? I can write in, I can write the equation also. What is the equation I can write? I can write Fp is equal to Q V cross V. And then we have to check which V matches. Well, we can solve using vector. But I'm saying without using this equation, because force is given, charge is given, B is given, I can I can, I can find the value of V from this formula. But I'm saying, can we also mark the direction of velocity so that force will act in this direction, given this field is in there like this, and charge is positive. Which direction the velocity will be? It has to perpendicular to force. So either upwards or downwards, which direction? Will it be upwards or downwards for force to act towards in this direction? Downwards. Downwards? So either this one, it will be VA or VB. In which case do we get a force like this? There are only two directions possible. I hope all are clear why I'm giving flying and drying if this is a direction of force. And since the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of paper, force will lie in the plane. Uh, velocity and force both will lie in the plane of paper. So uh, it has to be perpendicular to force either this direction or this direction. So is it along A direction or B direction? All of you okay with the direction? Upward or downward? A direction. A direction. This is the velocity. If this velocity, I can easily know uh, I, I, I component is negative and uh, J component is positive. If I were to calculate angle also, I could have easily calculated. How would I calculate this angle? This angle is equal to what? How much is this angle is? It is 4 I cap and 3. This, uh, this component is this is 4 and this is 3. 37. 37 degree. And this angle also will be equal to 37 degree. So uh, I can easily write the unit vector. So I is positive, J is negative. Sorry, I is negative, J is positive. Is, do we have a unique option here? I is negative, J positive. This only option. So even without calculation also, since all four have different signs, I could have eliminated this option, arrived at the right one. Desha, have you followed what I said? Yes, sir. Easy? Okay. Yes, sir. So far, and cyclotron also, you got a hang of what cyclotron is? Yes, sir. Let's look at some more questions. This is also a simple question. Uh, all of you read and uh, think in your mind how to solve. So this is something we have discussed yesterday. If what will happen if length is too small? What happens if length is large? Well, so uh, which direction? It doesn't matter. But this is depending on past mass. And if I take the charge to be positive, it will move towards left. Something it will have some circular path. So can we easily find this option? When would it region three region? When would it cross magnetic field? Can we write the condition? So if I have to write the condition. for particle to enter region three. Akshat, can you tell me how to find the condition for particle to enter region three? When would you enter the region three? So, uh, 
So this is this is the, the, you have to tell in terms of L and R. Is it not? It depends on if the radius is too small, it will come like this. What is the condition for it to enter the region three? To enter the region three, sir. Yes, but uh, see, particle should not uh, see. It can move like this, or it can move like this. Is it not? But in this yes. case, can it move like this? Once it crosses, then it will not no. come. It will move like this. Yeah. What is the condition for it to enter region three? R is greater than L. R is greater than L. So is that difficult, Rakshad? You should have told very easily. Yeah, yes, very easy. So R must be, or L must be less than R, or R is greater than L. Then it will enter the region. And then we can write in terms of R. Or if answer is in terms of other term Q V B, we can substitute value of R. Path length of a particle region three is maximum. When would path length be maximum here? Can someone tell me for a second? How do I write the condition? When would it travel a maximum distance in region two? Can you visualize what kind of path it will have for it to travel maximum distance in region two? Semicircle. Semicircle. But there are numbered semicircle path. So which kind of semicircle will make the path maximum? Shamni, can you tell what is this? Shamni, you have any question or you have an answer? Uh, I was about to answer it. Very good. Tell me. And now it's R equal to. Yeah, so this is the region. See, basically, what you are saying here, if uh, this is the range, this is the value in which the this is the range in magnetic field exists. So for different, if uh, this something, it can for a small velocity, it can take cross like this. R equal to L, sir. R equal to L. Or R is just less than L. Is it not? If R equal to L means what? It is tangential. Then you we'll keep moving like this. So somebody may say, R is just less than L. What happens? R is just less than L. What kind of motion it will have in that case? Semicircular path. Okay. So that's a condition. R is just less than L or uh, path length for region, so I have maximum velocity. Either written in terms of equal, but it has to be just less than. Time spent in region two is same for any velocity. Is this true? As long as particle returns to region one, is this correct? Yes. Sir. This is correct. Yes. Your so time spent will be equal to t by two as long as it comes back to region one. If it has to come back to region one, it means it has to have a semicircular path. See, when we say it has to return to region one, what does it imply? It implies it must have a semicircular path. Sir? Yes. Sir, if um, R is less than L, then for any case, it will be a semicircle only, right? Yes, but will the path length be same? Uh, no, sir. No. So, among the three, suppose I have one path, there's two and three. What is the condition? When does the path length become maximum? R is uh, just less than just So this is a good question to understand. I hope all are clear. Um, Shweta? Yes, sir. Have you understood? Yes, sir. Okay, I think this part. So far, what we have dealt with? We have dealt with even in case of cyclotron. So either it was moving in presence of magnetic field or in the electric field, not together. What is Lorentz force? Lorentz force is the force acting on the charge particle, a moving charge particle in presence of both magnetic and electric field. So it's pretty simple. I think one thing is easy to, if both fields are present and if the charge in motion, both forces will act. And resultant force is vector sum of electric force and electrostatic force and magnetic force. So that's a, this, is a, this is nothing new. I have just written if both the fields are present, if charge is at rest, if both the fields are present, still magnetic force will not work. Magnetic force acts only when there's a charge is in motion. That's a charge particle moving in presence of both magnetic and electric field will experience this force, which is vector sum of the two forces. Let's take some, uh, and one of the good way to understand Lorentz force is something called velocity selector. We'll just see what velocity selector is. Velocity selector is condition for no change in velocity or no deviation. Is it possible when both the forces are acting and still the particle has a, keeps moving with the same velocity? Is the condition is possible? Yes, it is possible when both forces are acting, still the net force is zero when both are equal and opposite, which is part of velocity selector. Let's understand what does velocity 
velocity selector B. This is a condition for no change velocity or no deviation. Let's understand. So suppose there's a charge particle here, QMV. It is projected in a magnetic field. So there's a magnetic field, cross magnetic field is into the plane of paper. The positive charge, dot right, cross left. It will turn towards left. It will experience a force towards left. Suppose the charge particle is moving in a magnetic field. Initially, I have taken the case, there's no electric field. The charge particle is moving in a magnetic field. A magnetic force will act. So if charge particle is positive, this is the direction magnetic force will act. So if it is moving, it will get deviated like this. Magnetic force will act. Now, what happens if we put a capacitor, if we bring two plates, charge plates, and if we have a charge plate, if we make it move through a charge plate, now magnetic field is present, electric field also present. Moment there's a plates like this, it will exert an electric field. So that electric field in downward direction will exert a downward force if the charge is positive. And since these two forces are, are opposite, in a particular case, they may become zero. So what is the condition? What will the net force become zero when this is equal to zero? And if they are in the opposite direction, we have taken out care of the direction. In that case, the magnitudes must be equal. Or when would the net force become zero? When E is equal to VB. And for E is equal to VB, not only this magnitudes have to satisfy this condition, there has to be appropriate direction. What is the direction we are taking here? See, look at this. If you take this x-axis and upward as a y-axis and into a, this is an axis. See, what kind of arrangement has to be there between velocity vector, magnetic field vector, and electric field vector so that net force becomes zero. Velocity in this particular case is along I cap direction. Magnetic field is along minus K cap direction. And electric field must be along minus J cap direction. Minus J cap. They all have to be mutually perpendicular. If all are mutually perpendicular, then only it can happen. So uh, if this is the condition, this condition is very easy to arrive at. We just equate the magnitude and we set the direction in such a way that magnetic force and electric force act in the opposite direction. If these are the magnitudes, it may result in zero force despite having both the fields present. So, uh, now let's take the case here, we're taking a particular velocity. Now if there, you have a range of velocity, so different particles move with a different velocity. So only, only some particle will go undeviated. If there's a range of velocity, we'll find some particles will get deviated like this. Some particles will have lesser deviation. Some particles will go undeviated and some particles will have deviation downwards. Okay, let's try to understand under which condition the particles will get have upward deviation. Which force has to be more? Magnetic. Magnetic. If this is greater than Fe. And when it goes F, F deviated, when Fb is equal to Fe. And when electric force becomes more, but field is same. What is, which term is varying here? Fe is not varying. Fb is varying. And why is Fb varying? Is if we have range of velocity, since magnetic force depends on velocity, its magnitude will be less on slower moving particle, it will be higher in a faster moving particle. Only those particles which have velocity given by velocities equal to E by B will go undeviated. So if I have a mix of charged particles having different kinetic energy, mass and charge are same. If I project and make it pass through electric field and magnetic field, which is in a cross fashion, if I keep a collector here, this collector will have a whole, this, if I have a slit here, this slit or particle which will pass through will have the same key. Are you getting, or will have same velocity. So this is something, I hope, uh, is this point understood? If I, in the line of direction of projection, if I make a slit here, all the particles which are passing through have come undeviated. All this particle must have a velocity V given by E by B. Yes, sir. That becomes a velocity selector. So that's the way I can, from uh, uh, multiple charge particles of same nature, but the mass, uh, multiple charge particles using a cross field, electric field and magnetic field, I can segregate, I can get a stream of charge particles which have same velocity. That's what we call it velocity selector. And that's the condition for velocity selector. 
and this is based on Lorentz force. We look at some more numerical of Lorentz force, but rest of application of Lorentz force is once we understand force, uh, rest of the questions can be solved based on principle of laws of motion and what power energy. Only thing what happens moment you have electric field acting, electric field can do work. So kinetic energy also can change if electric field is present. In this case, if the particle which is going undeviated, will the kinetic energy change? No, sir. The kinetic no, sir, because force is zero. Yeah. Why the, if the particle which goes undeviated, they say, let's see that three, three charge, three uh, velocities. One with this velocity is equal to E by B. Some velocities are greater than V and some velocities are less than V. So which have greater than V, those velocity will have higher magnetic force, they will have upward deviation. So V1 will reach here and V2 particles will reach here. And uh, uh, this V will reach here. This, there's no change in velocity. So let's say this particle A has a velocity greater than V and V has a velocity less than V. I hope you understand which velocity I'm talking about, E by V. When V1, this particle A reaches here, will it reach with the same velocity? Will it reach with a different velocity? Will the velocity be same or different? It will increase, sir. It will increase or decrease? This particle has displacement opposite to direction of electric force. So what work electric force has done? So electric force will do work only when there's a displacement in vertical direction. Horizontal direction, it will not do any work. So this particle, no work has been done by electric force. It will come unchanged velocity, undeviated. How about V1? V1 had a displacement in the upper direction. Work. Field is acting diagonally. So the work done by work done by Fe will be negative. If work done is negative, what will happen? This will slow down. What will happen to this particle? Work done by electric force is positive. If work done by electric force is positive, this particle will emerge with a higher velocity. So, yes. So, why don't we look at work done by magnetic force? Yeah, magnetic force we told already, it will never do any work. Because it is always the perpendicular. See, whichever direction the particle moves, magnetic force always oh, yeah. adjusts itself in a such a way it is perpendicular to direction. Yes, sir. Yes. So it will not, direction will keep changing. It will keep adjusting itself uh, so that it is perpendicular. You know, so, uh, so I understand what will happen in case of velocity selector. And uh, I know, I haven't seen a question asking this anywhere in the book, but this is something I thought uh, if you understand, it gives you better understanding of what, how does it function. So we'll continue more on application of uh, Lorentz force in the next classes. This is the tomorrow session won't be on this topic. I think tomorrow session is on uh, okay uh, thermodynamics. Is it not? Today is already Thursday. Okay. So this topic I'll continue Monday, and but you can again go through. And this topic is not for not scheduled for the weekend test, but it's still I think you can go through today at least and try to get a, a good understanding of what you done today. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank now, you, sir. this is well done. And uh, anybody has any query, now we can. Uh...